Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Hunt Showdown. So today I want to talk about traits. Now, a traits video is a little bit difficult to do because a lot of the traits are situational based on what you're going to be running weapon-wise, this playstyle you have, etc, etc. So rather than do a video about that today, or about a specific playstyle or weapon set, I'm going to talk about the traits which I think are the best traits in the game for use throughout every playstyle. So they're the ones that are like your go-to because they're just good for every situation. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now traits, a bit like the weapon sets in Hunt, are very personal and everybody has a preference. So if you're an experienced player who's come along and found this, do the new players a favour Go to the comments, list your top 10 traits that you usually take on a character, and then explain your playstyle a little bit, even if it's just a couple of words or a couple of sentences, and the weapons you would generally take with that set of traits. Because there'll be new players who come along and think, oh, I want to play this kind of way or that kind of way, and that'll really help them as it's like a quick reference they can check in the comments. I will look at doing a few videos for some builds that I play personally, and... Maybe that'll help people a little bit there. But today we will focus, as I say, on the traits that are just good in every situation. We'll talk about the general ones first, the ones that are good for solos, the ones that are good in a team, which aren't many, incidentally, that are just generally good for a team. And we'll maybe speak about one or two others outside of that that are just generally helpful later on. So, let's start by having a little chat about this screen. So this is the trait screen. You'll have seen it a few times if you've gone into your Hunter. Over on the left are the details of the trait you currently have selected. If I click through them, you can see it changes. Also, if you hover over them, it gives you the details as well. In the middle, you have the main picture of the trait, and then they have a little icon down here as well now. Previously, you just got the main picture on this screen, and you had to scroll a little bit more, maybe. Over on the right here, you can see your current traits for this hunter. You can have up to 15 traits. I usually try and leave one free for scarce traits. Scarce traits are these ones down here, like Shadow Leap. These ones are only available in the game. So those ones effectively come up as trait charms in the game. You'll see some of them are plain white or white and gray. Those ones can be any trait. The scarce traits will show up as a bluish version of this trait charm. And the burn traits, which can have a single use before they burn out, so to speak, those will appear as red tinted trait charms. Anyhow, that's a by the by. So you can have up to 15. You can click on them as well, and you can remove traits. If I select, for example, Necromancer, which is worth four, and I click remove, you get some points back if you remove the trait as well. So you get a little bit of a refund. Currently, I have 14 upgrade points, which you can see here. Upgrade points are gained by leveling up your hunter. So basically playing the game, as long as your hunter survives, you get upgrade points. You can also get them at these envelopes that you will see in game randomly on walls by interacting with them. You can get a handful. It doesn't always give you the same amount. And also you can get some randomly from the dark tribute, which you can do. So a few different ways to get points. Points are mainly to spend on traits. However, you can also expend them on replacing damaged health bars so if you get one burnt out or you lose one because you're downed in a game and then you evac you can use your upgrade points to replace those so a couple of uses okay other than that let's go down here and have a little look at the traits themselves so top left hand corner is a favorite tag so you can favorite it and unfavorite it in the top right hand corner of these boxes is when it's relating to a current fact or event at least at the moment so this is the Lawful Pact, this is the Demented Pact, and this is the Wilderness Pact. And I don't want to go into it too much, but basically these three here are just for this event, and they will probably go later. Sometimes they add them to the main pool after an event, but for right now, just imagine that these will be gone. Perhaps if you're watching after this current event. There were other 
traits, which will have those icons too. And that's because if you have that pact or you've signed up to that pact, if you take those traits, you get an additional bonus. In the bottom left, you will see white, red, or blue little icons. This is white, which means it's a bonus for a solo player. So you get an additional bonus on top of the normal bonus that the trait gives. And then red is for a burn trait where you get one use and then it burns out. And blue is for a scarce trait where you can only find it in the game map. That's fairly straightforward. And then at the bottom right, you have the points it costs if you can purchase it. If you can't purchase it because it's a scarce trait or it's part of the event and you have to join a pack to get it, it won't have anything there. I think that's reasonably straightforward. Okay, so that's this screen dealt with. One other thing I'd like to mention on this screen are the unlocking of traits. So when you start the game, you will have up to and including Shadow Leap available. So that's all the scarce traits, the packed traits, and a handful of ones you can purchase. After that, Greyhound unlocks at Bloodline rank 3 and Resilience at rank 4, and so on and so forth. The higher you go in levels in the Blood rank, the more of these you unlock. Unfortunately, some of them are obviously quite far down the Bloodline rank 3. So it's important you play the game and just level up to get access to them all. Some of the ones I'll be talking about in a moment will be available at the start and some of them won't. But I'm just going to mention them all anyway because it feels a little bit silly just to mention the rank 1 ones because you're going to rank up pretty quickly at the start. So the following traits are ones that I feel are good in pretty much any situation and there's no reason I wouldn't just take them if I had the points perhaps. There's a couple that are more likely to be taken by me than others, but other players will feel differently. So I'm just going to list all the ones I think are very useful. So first and foremost, which is available at rank one when you start playing the game, is Doctor. It's nine points. It's probably one of the best traits in the game. It is quite expensive, but it's expensive because it doubles the amount of health that is restored by your first aid kit. And your first aid kit, as we discussed in the loadout video, is so, so important in this game. So that is a massive one. That one is just good all the time. Greyhound is another favorite of mine. Greyhound you get at rank three, I believe it unlocks. So once you've played the game just a little bit, you will get access to Greyhound. Now Greyhound, as you can see here, allows you to sprint at full speed for a longer duration. This is great for catching people who are running with the bounty. It's great for escaping if you've got the bounty, because if the other players don't have it, they either won't be able to catch you or you will be able to catch them. And at least if you both have it, it means you're kind of keeping at the same pace. So it's a really good trait. And it's, it's also great for getting around the map. It means you just get around the map faster, especially this new one, which is pretty big. Next up is one that unlocks a little bit later down the tree, and that is Physician. This reduces the time needed to bandage, aka the time needed to use your first aid kit. So if you're in the middle of a firefight, you've taken a hit and you want to heal yourself quickly before the enemy manages to charge you, Physician is the way to do it. A great trait, highly recommended. Does take a little while to unlock, obviously. Then there is another great trait called Determination, which is here. So Determination, I don't take a huge amount, but it is a really good trait and I feel like I just overlook it. Basically, you know how when you're running or when you're doing a lot of melee attacks, your stamina takes a short while to start recovering? Well, this means that it starts much faster. So it just allows you to keep on the move or, you know, keep doing combat with melee weapons a lot faster than you would be able to otherwise. Then another one that I really like, and I, you know, I'm sure there's people who aren't so keen, is Gator Legs. Gator Legs allows you to walk and sprint faster in deep water. It also makes less noise while you're crouch walking in water. This is a great one, again, for going with Greyhound and getting across a map. It's good for chasing after people. It's good for running from people. I just, I find this really helpful. And on some of the maps that have a lot more water, you know, it's a blessing, a genuine blessing. It's there for a reason. But again, quite late in the tree, so you're going to have to wait a while to unlock that one. Another great trait that's a good all-rounder is Conduit. You get a health and stamina boost when your team picks up a clue or closes a rift. That's just a really nice bonus. So it works in solo, so if anyone on your team does it or you do it, then 
you you know when you're doing bounty hunt and getting a clue you get the bonus and it works if you randomly get it in soul survivor so really good trait nice to get a health and stamina boost just helps you keep moving around the map at nice speed again not a must-have but a good general all-rounder okay and one that i would never have mentioned in the previous patches probably is salve skin so with the changes to burning in the new version i think this might actually now be worth it so it reduces the fire damage and burn speed even when you're down so when you go down people can burn you and then you burn out and then you're very hard to resurrect this slows that down so i'm now thinking maybe it is worth mentioning because you know anything that gives your teammates a little bit of extra time to get you up is very helpful because if they don't get you up and you burn out completely then they need a bounty from the bounty target to be able to res you from that situation and then the final one I'll mention, which again isn't a must-have, but isn't nice to have, is Lightfoot. Five points. This means you vault, fall, and climb ladders silently. So it's good for sneaking around, and it's good for getting into buildings, like boss buildings, when someone else is in there, and you're trying to get a good angle on them. Because if you don't do this, or you don't get this Lightfoot, you're really noisy going up ladders. People don't realise how noisy you are. It also reduces the sound of walking through noise traps, but... That's a by the by, it's just an extra bonus. So, they're sort of the main ones that I would say are just great all rounders and good in every situation. Now, I'll mention the solo and team ones next, and then I'll mention a couple of other traits that I think are nice to have, but are definitely not necessarily all rounders, but just nice to haves. So, first up is solo. So, the main one. I'd recommend right at the start is Magpie. It only costs one point. You receive three short effects when picking up a bounty token from this, and that's whether you're solo or not. So that's an antidote, stamina, and regeneration shot effect. So it's a nice thing to have. But a big thing for solos is dark sight boost capacity and all boost sources are doubled. So instead of getting five seconds, you get 10 seconds. That is massive. That is massive. So really worth it for one point. Now, the next one is Serpent. Serpent, again, can be used when you're in team games, but it just gets a massive bonus when you're a solo. So, using Dark Sight, you can interact with nearby clues, rifts, banishable targets, and abandoned bounties from a safe distance of 25 meters. But if you're a solo, it doubles to 50 meters. So, you can sit in a compound outside where the boss is and steal the bounty token and just lay it. It's very cheeky, but it's really good. You don't realise how much that 25 metres is. That additional 25 metres to make it 50 is m massive in the game. You don't realise till you go between the two. The other one I'll mention. Now, Necromancer in the previous patch was a must-have for me when I was playing solo. Now it's kind of touch and go. Necromancer is now a burn trait, so you use it once and it's gone. As a solo, you can revive your downed hunter and it triggers a full health restoration with all your bars, regardless of whether they've been burnt off or not. So you get up with full health, which is fantastic. But a lot of people, because of how fast you burn out now, will just sit and wait for you to burn out. And if you get up, they're going to shoot you anyway. So I have mixed feelings. I wouldn't prioritize this over more important things, perhaps. Like, I'd rather have Doctor. I'd rather be able to heal myself in a fight. Because Necromancer might just be a waste of four points if the opponent is just going to sit, wait, and shoot you anyway. It's really helpful, I guess, in situations where you're in a fight with multiple teams and you can get up while they're still fighting and things like that. But I think it's still good. I just don't think it's as good as it once was because you could do it multiple times previously until you ran out of health bars. So, you know, people still like it, though. For team games, a great one that you unlock pretty early, the one after Greyhound, is Resilience. Your hunter is revived with up to full health. So you don't get any burnt off bars back and you don't get the bar back from when you get downed, but it will bring you back a full health instead of just having a tiny bit of health. So if you get rezzed and get shot at immediately, there's a chance you're not going to go straight down. So resilience is really good in team games. If you're a team player, highly recommend. It could save your life. At least the second time. 
And again, I will just mention Necro. It is, as I say, a burn trait now. You can only use it once, but it allows you to revive a downed teammate from a distance of 25 meters in a pinch when they're a little bit further away from you or behind something you can't quite reach because someone's covering you with a sniper or whatever else. It is still quite handy, so they're definitely worth thinking about still. There's nothing else that's sort of really helping your team per se. So, yeah. There's a couple of nice ones, which I would actually recommend for new players, but unfortunately are unlocked very far down the tree, which is a bit silly. So there's Kite Skin, which reduces fall damage, which is great if you're learning how much fall damage you get across various parts of the map and distances of height. Uh, there is Beast Face, which is down here. Unfortunately, again, a late unlock, but this reduces the reaction range of animals. So ducks, birds, bats, horses, cows chickens and dogs in cages not the hellhounds though very handy if you're learning the game and struggling with setting off the sound traps unfortunately really far down the tree and then the other one which again is even further down the tree is pitcher i think this is really helpful for new players and i don't know why it's so far away basically it increases the throwing range of all items using the aim helper you know the little bar or the dotted line that appears um it basically extends the range of that and just makes throwing longer distances easier. And I don't know why it's so far down, because I feel like it's such a big help to new players. But never mind. It is what it is. Okay, two final traits I'd like to mention as good, good things to have, but not necessarily that you need them. So I really like Pack Mule. Pack Mule, you receive an additional tool or consumable when looting players or opening item boxes, so you're guaranteed an extra item which I find really, really helpful. I love that one. And then the other one I really like is Frontiersman. So Frontiersman is unlocked quite late and is fairly expensive, but you get an extra use on all your carried tools. Ignore the wilderness packed bit, but an extra use of all your tools. So an extra use of your first aid kit. So you get four uses instead of three is massive. And obviously really good for things like throwing knives, which you get an extra one of, or things like traps. If you're someone who likes to put traps down, that's quite nice. You get an extra trap. So Frontiersman is quite a nice, you know, Black Mule and Frontiersman, quite nice all-rounders. Nice things to have. Everything else is kind of based on weapons that you're taking or a particular play style. And I don't want to go into all of that because we'll be here for two hours. Um... A couple of things I'd like to mention, perhaps, I and I, which I mentioned in my loadout video. So you remain in your eye sights between shots when you're firing bolt action, lever action, and pump action weapons. It's just quite handy for when you've got a rifle that you can stay in your iron sights and keep firing at someone instead of it pulling you out constantly. So that's just a nice one to have if you're using any kind of rifle with, well, they're pretty much all bolt action, lever action, or pump action, aren't they? Um... With the exception of a couple, perhaps. There's nothing else that really, you know, always jumps out at me to be like, oh, you should get this. Some people might say adrenaline. When you're at critical health, you receive a small stamina boost, but eh, it's neither here nor there in many respects. I think Quartermaster is worth a quick mention here. It just allows you to equip a medium slot weapon as well as a large slot. So that's quite good if you want to take like a full-size rifle and maybe a sawed-off shotgun. Vetrelli or the, what were the Winfields, the Frontier or the Ranger. That's quite nice for those because then you could take a shotgun with them for when you're very close range. Just an option. But yeah, I will leave this video here. Because, as I say, I really don't want to make it too long and I don't want to go into everything. So I hope it was helpful going over some that are going to be useful in every situation. And some that are good for solos and teams. And then the extra ones we've mentioned at the end are just a, a bit of information, I guess. But if any experienced players want to list their top 10, how they play and what weapons they would take with it, please, please do. It's so helpful. We have such a helpful community in Hunt Showdown. And it's nice to see what other people take, to be honest. And it might give some new players some cool ideas. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all soon.